Welcome students! Today, we're going to be discussing social engineering. Professor, what's social engineering? Well, social engineering is the art of manipulating people psychologically so they do things or disclose confidential information like bank information or passwords. Social engineering is used everywhere and doesn't require any additional resources other than some natural charisma. Basically, anyone can perform social engineering. In fact, it leverages and takes advantage of the innate human nature of trust, which is why it can be easy to fall victim to it. I see. What else should we know about social engineering? Well, there are actually many different types of social engineering, but today we will overview the most common ways. To start off, one of the most common types of social engineering attacks comes in the form of phishing. Even these come in different forms. But in general, phishing is a type of social engineering where the attacker sends a fraudulent message to trick their human victim into revealing sensitive information to the attacker, or even deploy malicious software on the victim's device. An example of phishing might be when you receive an email that appears as if it came from your bank. The email claims to have some kind of important information about your account, but you need to reply it with your full name, date of birth, social security number, and your account number so they can verify that it's truly you. Ultimately, this is not the bank employee asking for your information, it's a person trying to steal your private data. Another type of social engineering is pretexting. Pretexting is an attack that involves a situation created by the attacker in order to lure their victim into a vulnerable situation and trick them into giving them private information. Specifically, they would target information that the victim would not typically give outside of the context of the situation. The most common example of a pretexting attack is when someone calls an employee pretending to be someone in power, like a CEO or someone in the IT department. The attacker comes up with a scenario and convinces their victim that the scenario is true and collects the company information that way. And finally, vishing, which is short for voice phishing, is another type of social engineering attack. This occurs when a fraudster attempts to trick the victim into disclosing sensitive information through an actual phone call or an automated message. For example, a victim might be getting a phone call that appears to be an automated message from the IRS to verify their identity by giving up their social security number and date of birth, or else they will not get their tax returns for that year. It seems like all of the types of social engineering create some sense of urgency to trick the victims into disclosing their personal information. That's right. Social engineering invokes some kind of fear or sense of urgency to exploit victims. So, Professor, what are some ways to avoid falling victim to social engineering attacks? Great question. I'll go over a few tips that will help you stay protected and vigilant against any social engineering attacks. First, never click any suspicious links or attachments from emails or messages. In fact, if you do need to do something that is related to the links, you can go straight to the source. For example, if a bank emailed you to reset your password and provided a link for you to do so, you should not click that link, but rather visit the bank website directly instead to reset your password, even if the email was legit. You should also delete any request for your personal information or passwords. Legitimate sources will never ask you for this information ever, especially through email. Finally, you should also reject any offers of help or requests for help from sources that you do not know or you did not contact. You can always do further research about who the sender is to determine if they are truly legitimate, but always stay wary. Alright class, so what did we learn today? Social engineering attacks manipulate people so they give up their confidential information or do tasks that will benefit the attacker. Anyone can do social engineering and there are also many types of social engineering attacks and many methods create a sense of urgency or fear so the victim can fall for their tricks. And finally, the main lesson to avoid falling victim to social engineering is to always do research about the sender and to never naively give away information.